Do you know why you're here, Gail? He raped me. Who raped you? Do you know him, Gail? I, I, I can't. I can't. I can't tell anybody. I can't tell anybody. They won't believe me. They won't believe me. I know it. I can't tell anybody. He, he called me. He was there. He must have been watching me the whole time. He was in the lake. He was, he was there, 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 Freezing. Come on, it's the last swim of the season. We do this every year. It's going to be the last swim of my life. I'm going to have a heart attack as soon as I jump in the water. It's like Indian summer outside. You'll get used to it. No, it's freezing. After the initial shock, we'll warm up. I told you I'm going to have a heart attack. Come on. I can't. You're old. <laughs> Where is the sweater tomorrow night? Where are we going? A movie? And then out for coffee. I don't think I'm ready for this. Bill said Steve's a nice guy. You'll like him. Well, maybe I should wear my, my pink sweater. The blue one looks better on you. Well, what movie are we going to see? Three Days of the Condor. Bill picked it. Redford's in it. Do you think he's cute? Redford? No, Steve. Yes. <laughs> Steve Pastorinas happens to be a straight-A student. He's already been accepted at Dartmouth, and he's on the fencing team. He isn't my type. What's that supposed to be? He's too successful. You're impossible. I suppose E.K. Miller was more your type. <laughs> no, E.K. Miller wasn't my type. Then who is? I don't know. I just know who isn't. You are impossible. Well, just let me ask you one thing. What if I don't like Steve Pastorinas? And you don't have to go out with him again. What if he doesn't like me? Impossible. <laughs> uh. You two stay here. I'll go get her. Oh, listen, where is Steve? He's in the car. Oh, he's in the car. I would like to meet him. Why is he in the car? Well, he would have come in, except for he was driving, and we're sort of double parked. It seemed easier this way. Hello. Hello. Uh, Mrs. Brownstein? That's right. Uh, uh I'm uh, Steve Pastorinas. Hello, Steve. I'm very glad to meet you. I'm nice. glad you came in. Nice to meet you. Are you ready? Well, bye, Mom. We'll be home early. By 12, Gail, huh? Midnight, Steve. Yes. Well, have a good time, kids. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Hey, John, here's some money. I just love that part, you know, when Faye Dunaway says that he doesn't have much of a future and that he's going to die. When was that? You know, when um, Redford says that he, he just wants to spend the night and then he'll leave. I remember. I thought it was very romantic. I didn't. I still say she shouldn't have just let him sleep with her like that. She didn't just let him sleep with her. I mean, 
she was falling in love with him. She wanted him, too. That's not love. That's sex. Well, what's wrong with that? Maybe it'll turn into love. She got what she wanted. Oh, I wouldn't do it. What's that supposed to mean? Well, they were falling in love, and I still think it's beautiful. Gail, you could meet a stranger, fall in love with him, and go to bed with him in two days. Maybe. It's three days. No, it wasn't. No, that was the second night they were together. Well, I couldn't. Well, how can you be so sure about everything all the time? Because nobody falls in love in two days. That's in love. Well, that's the future. Oh, come on. I think you're both overanalyzing this, you know? I mean, uh, Redford was just telling her what she wanted to hear. I give up. Hey, listen, you two, haven't you ever heard of romance? I could fall in love in, uh, two days. Two hours. Maybe it isn't forever, but that doesn't mean it's not love. I guess they didn't like the movie. <laughs> well, I did. Me too. I hear I you're in, <laughs> into <defense>. photography. <laughs> you first. So you go first. Okay. Um, I hear you take terrific photographs. You did? Who told you? You also take compliments really well. <laughs> yeah, I sure do. Uh, no, um, my pictures aren't terrific. They might be someday. I mean, they're good. Well, they're pretty good. It's getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they're good. <laughs> what about Dartmouth? You're going there next year. What's your major going to be? Uh, biology. Bet you win a Nobel Prize. I'm gonna catch it. I better go in. I'm late already. Well, that then a, a couple more minutes from her. You're being very bad. Okay, just one more. have lunch with me tomorrow? Hello? 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 Is this a joke? Because if you don't tell me your name, I'm gonna hang up. Who called last night? I don't know. It must have been a wrong number. I don't want your friends calling here that late. Why do you say it's one of my friends? I just said it was a wrong number. All right, all right. Peace. What time did you get home? <sighs> About 12. 12.20. 12 Why did you ask if you already knew? What your mother is trying to say is that you were out late and don't let it happen again. That's not what I'm trying to say, and please don't speak for me. 
Look, I do not intend to sit up and worry about you, Ariana. Worry about what? Mother, don't you trust me? If Steve Pastorini's or Roni's or whatever his name is can't get you home on time, you're not going out with him again, Gail. And Why don't you like him? Why is it you don't like anybody I've ever gone out with? I don't even know him. Steve is not the issue. Yes, Steve is the issue because you made up your mind to not like him before you even met him. Look, when I tell you to be home at 12 o'clock, I mean 12 o'clock, not 12.20. Hey, this isn't getting us anywhere now. Go to school. You're getting late. Mom? Goodbye. Am I too hard on her? I guess I'm too hard on her. I don't know. I don't know. I just worry about her. Why? Why? Don't you remember how she upset she was when she broke up with Eddie Miller? Hmm? Oh, I don't want to rush into anything again. Like we did? That's not what I was talking about. But now that you mention it, yes, like we did. 18, 18 when we got married. That's just too young. It was too young. But here we are. What was the story with Gail and B.K. Nolan? I don't know. Why don't you ask her? Do you think that she would tell me? No. <laughs> uh -huh. mm -mm. I just worry about her. She's only 17. At that age, they're immortal. Mm-mm. She's not. we met. In silence I grieve that thy heart could forget, thy spirit deceive. If I should meet thee after long years, how should I greet thee? With silence and with tears. What is the poet telling us, Miss Bremer? I don't know. I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. Mm -hmm. I see you already know all there is to know about love. Lord Byron is not so eloquent as Miss Alison Bremer. I don't know why I waste my breath. You all make puppy eyes at one another in the ice cream store and you think you know everything. that she's such a crackpot. <laughs> I don't know. She is dramatic. I like her. You say she was the Tsar's mistress. Allison. Okay. She's not old enough. Can't be right. <laughs> she and Sonia sure are a pair. Really? All right. Tell me, what did you think of Steve Pastorius? Well, like you said, he is an A student. He has been accepted to Dartmouth. He is on the fencing team. Gail. And he is smart and sexy and fun to be with. And we like the same movies. And he's perfect. He's absolutely perfect. Oh, Gail, that's great. When are you going to see him again? Ten minutes. Lunch today. Not lunch. I mean a real date. I don't know. Will hasn't asked me yet. Each time we have a quote, it almost breaks my heart Because I'm so afraid that we will have to part Each night I ask the stars above Why must I be a teenager in love? 
from Steve. Well, don't you think he'll ask me himself? I don't see why not. He likes you. How do you know? Because he told Phil. Hmm. Why didn't you tell me? I just did. I'll go find Phil and save us a table. Steve? Hi. Hi. Thank you. Allison's saving seats for us. Okay. Oh, I'm hey, starving. Listen, you are a true pal. Uh, I lent E.K. my chemistry homework this morning. Just the comparison, Gail, a mere meeting of great minds. You know, uh, Pastorinus, I'd have to call this an even trade. Yeah? I pass chemistry and, uh, you get Gail. I don't think it's so even, E.K. I get the better end of the deal. Yeah? Yeah. Well, uh, listen. Don't bet on it. What's that all about? I don't know. Didn't you used to go out with him? Yeah, when I first moved here. Hey! We're over here! Hey! Thank, Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. is to create a personality as you see it. A self-portrait makes a statement about you. How do you feel about you? Now, today we're going to try out different selves, okay? It should appeal to most of you. Now, just by changing a nuance of your character, of your image, you can show us how you feel. A macho self, a sexy self. Okay, Gail, uh, why don't you try? Give us a sexy self-portrait, okay? Knock yourself out, sweetheart. Okay, Gail, that's uh, Hollywood sexy. Give us a little reality, okay? <laughs> All right. Listen, I've got some information for you. Bill said Steve's gonna call you and ask if you want to go on a double date with us Friday night. Good. Well, what's the matter? I want you to look at something. Look at this. It was sticking out of my locker. So? 
Well, don't you think it's a little bit creepy? Don't be so dramatic. Somebody's watching you. He likes you. That's all it says. I don't know. You always overreact. It doesn't even have your name on it. Maybe someone stuck it in any old locker. Phil's waiting for me. I gotta go. My dad mostly designs schools and hospitals and stuff like that. In San Francisco, he commutes every day. Yeah, it is a long way, but he wants to live here. How long has she been on that phone? 45 minutes. 45? Is it Steve again? Who else? Oh, now, what, tell me, what could be all that interesting, huh? Well, uh, how about the Beatles' first album? The Beatles? Mm -hmm. The Beatles? Huh. You know, when we were in college, we were on the phone together all the time. Yep, every night at 6 o'clock. <laughs> oh, if you only knew. You know, if you were late, one minute late, I would sit there by that phone. <laughs> I'm churning away. I was never late. You were late. You were late. Often you were late. I'll tell you something. I used to make a list of all that happened to me during the day, just so I'd be sure to tell you everything. Did you? Mm-hmm. Gosh, it all seems so important. It was. See, my parents bought an A-frame up in Powder Mill Lake when I was a little kid, so we've been coming up here in the summer for years. And then six months ago, our apartment in San Francisco got ripped off, and my dad decided we should move here. He thought it would be safer. Gail, hang up. It's enough now. You hear that? <laughs> I better go. Okay. 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 <laughs> Bye. to know. You cannot pretend that nothing has changed. You talk to me, damn don't it. Don't change the subject. I already told you what I think. I don't want you taking a job selling real estate. What's wrong with selling real estate? Well, if I seem to remember correctly, you hated real estate when we were in college. When we were in college, I was putting you through graduate school. I wasn't selling houses. I was renting dumpy apartments to college students while my boss tried to make passes at me. You never told me that. Oh, Neil. Look, forget it. I don't want you to do it. It's not necessary. It is necessary. It is necessary to me. It is necessary because I am not going to stand here and let our lives fall apart. Gail, um... Come in. What's going on? Nothing. How about some chocolate ice cream? Jessica Hirsch called, Gail. She wants to know if you can babysit tomorrow night. Her regular sort of canceled. But I have a date with Steve. Well, believe it or not, I didn't know that you had plans. 
Her number's by the phone. Do what you want. Wait a minute. I'll do it. I'll do it. Who's calling this hour? Hello. 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 Anybody gets hungry, there's some yogurt pops in the fridge. Mm. I'll tell you what, if you go get your book, I'll read to you. Terrific, you're a hit. Jessica! Hi, come in. How are you doing? Fine. Hello, Gail. Hi, Mr. Elden. You two know each other? Mm -hmm. Oh, right, from high school. Right, you ready? Yeah, just a minute. Oh, uh, Gail, we'll be at the movies, so there's no way you can reach us. Oh, that's okay. We'll be fine. Well, okay, but uh, I'll give you a call around 10 o'clock just to check in, okay? Uh, counselor, we are going to miss the credits. Mm -hmm. Andy, come say goodbye, honey. You mm -hmm. smell good. Like baby powder. You know, those last photos you took were really good. You're starting to develop your own style now. Oh, thank you. I wasn't really sure. You need to get your confidence, Gail. Start showing your work. I was going to ask you about the yearbook. It's a great idea. Why don't you stop up to the office sometime next week after school? We'll talk about it. Okay, thank you. Chris? Mm-hmm. You're the one who said we were going to be late if we didn't hurry. Right you are. Good night, Gail. Good night. Good night. Oh, uh, and don't forget to lock the door. Okay. Okay. Good night. Bye. I'll race you guys to the door. Go. Go. Run. Run. You lost it. That's very good. Come on, let's go upstairs. Come on. I'll read the book. Whoops. Hello? Hello? I'm getting closer. Gail? <gasps> Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. You okay? Well, we tried to call you, and the theater was sold out, so we decided that we'd just have dinner and come home early. As a matter of fact, we were a little worried about you. Chris tried to call, and uh, there was no answer. Oh, um, maybe there was something wrong with the telephone. Well, I probably dialed the wrong number. I meant to ask you if you could sit for me next weekend. My regular sitter's a little hard to pin down these days. Evidently, Cupid has struck. <laughs> Don't be so snide. I'm not being snide. I'm just jealous, that's all. Are you interested? Here. 
think that's right. Anyway, I'd love to see you take it as a regular Saturday night babysitting job, or you could just let me know from week to week. Well, I'm not sure. Um, can I call you? Okay, think about it. Please, I'll drive you home. Oh, no, it's okay, I'll walk. I, I'd rather walk. I, I do it all the time. Gail? Is there something wrong? What is it? Somebody called, and they said horrible things, and I hung up on them. Yeah, I'm sorry. Some guy used to call here all the time, but he stopped after I told him I put a trace on the phone. I guess I'll just have to change my number. I think it was for me. Well, why should it be for you? It's my house, isn't it? Come on, don't worry about it, okay? Why don't you let Chris drive you home? No, no, it's okay. I'm fine. It isn't far anyway. Good night. Good night. Jesse just couldn't stand the idea of your walking home alone. Lady lawyers. Cautious types. Hey, Gail? Is anything wrong? No. <clears throat> no. Ah, uh, there it is. The second house on the right. Thank you, Mr. Eldon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I'll see you later. I want to see those photographs, Gail. Now, don't forget. circles for? Mug shots. Everybody's going to Phil's.
This place has everything. I've, I've been here before, my father. When? Well, uh, he's a plumber. The sink's back up, and I uh, help him fix him. Look at Allison. She looks so happy. It must be really wonderful to know exactly what your future is going to be. I mean, she'll marry Phil, and, and someday they'll have this house. And... I wouldn't want this house lousy pipes. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. between you and E.K. Miller? He's mad at me. I know he's mad at you. But what happened between the two of you? Now you're mad at me, too? I am not mad at you. Yes, you are. See that road up there? Turn left. Where are we going? I'll show you. It'll take us to the lake house I was telling you about. <sighs> what happened with me and E.K., it's hard to explain. I went with him for a couple of months. It was just after I moved here. And we had a good time for a while. And then he broke up with me because I wouldn't sleep with him. Go on. That's it. But why is he so mad at you? I just told you. That's the only reason? He thinks I let him on, but I didn't. I never said I would. I don't. The whole thing, it's stupid. It's completely stupid. I didn't know what I wanted, but I knew that it wasn't right between us. Gail, then why didn't you break up with him? I don't know. I, I just thought it would sort of happen after a while that I would fall in love with him. But I didn't. It never happens that way, does it? Gail, um, did E.K. love you? No. And he never said he did. Ask me. Ask you what? Ask me if I love you. How does Steve feel about Gail? He loves her. I love you, too. We just met him. So what? Oh, I forgot. Love has a future. Well, it does. Okay. Maybe I overdid it a little bit for Phil's benefit. <laughs> He's such a prude. But you practically just met Steve, Pastor Edith. How can you call that love? Because it has a present. You're impossible. 
Dale, don't read it. Why don't you just throw it away? I know where you are. I'm watching you, you tramp. It's it. It's terrible. Read it. I don't have to read it to see what it's doing to you. You're letting some creep get to you. Read it, Allison. Okay. I said it's terrible, and it is. Now forget it. Why would anybody write this? What if I do? Gail, forget about it. Can't you just put it out of your head? Pretend it never happened. I can't forget about it. I want to do something about it. He'll get tired of it. He'll stop. Well, what if he doesn't? What are you going to do? Call the Oldenfield police and have them stake out your locker? Gail, for once, can't you just not react? May I speak with you? Oh, yes. Come in, Gail. Sit down. I'm glad you dropped by. I was going to send for you today because I wanted to talk to you about your PSAT scores. I was comparing them with your grades, and frankly, Gail, Ms. Rillard, you should have scored higher. For a bright girl, you're a bit of an underachiever. Don't worry. A little bit of work and we'll get those scores up. As a matter of fact, I have several books I can recommend. What's this? It was in my locker. There's been other notes and phone calls. Who, Gail? Who wrote this? I don't know. Think hard. Most of the time, the girl does know who the boy is that's bothering her. Well, I've thought about it. I've been thinking about it all the time. I don't know. Gail, you don't look like the kind of girl that would encourage this sort of thing, but well, I... That note says that he's coming after me. Calm down. Calm down. Nobody is coming after you. Boys your age are all talk. I can't help you unless we know who it is. Let's try to figure this out. Has there been anyone hanging around lately? Making remarks, that sort of thing? Think hard, Gail. Sometimes, without even realizing it, you might have been rejecting of a boy. Well, you make it sound like it's my fault. Oh, no, no. It could be completely innocent on your part. Boys are very easily provoked. An old boyfriend, maybe. No, no, I, I don't think so. Um, I have to go to class. Gail, I want you to think about it and let me know what you come up with. In the meantime, I'll have a word with a few of our problem boys and we'll talk in a few days, okay? Let me count the ways. I love thee with the depth and breadth and height of all my soul can reach. When feeling out of sight, for the end of being an ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from rain. I love thee with the passion Review. We will continue this tomorrow, class. Gail. I do not wish to pry, but is there something troubling you? Perhaps you'd like to talk about it. No, I'm fine. Thank you, though. Mm.
You said you wanted to talk to me about the yearbook. Oh, I forgot. You still interested? Yeah, sure. Well, what if you uh, took some shots of the athletic events? You might enjoy working with movement. Okay. Now, these are really good. I like them. Oh, especially that one. It's kind of sexy. Mr. Eldon? Oh, hi, Gail. Hi. Hey, uh, I've got a scratch on the negative here. Is there anything I can do for it? talk to you. Okay, let's go. What is this? Somebody left it in my locker. Who? I don't know. Well, look, are you sure it's for you? I mean, there's no name on it. I'm sure. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Look, it's just that I don't know what to make of it. I mean, maybe it's just some stupid joke. No, no, I don't think it's a stupid joke. There was another note. Another note? Yeah, I, I think somebody's trying to scare me. And I think we should try to figure out who. I know, but I've tried. Look, Gail, there must be some clues. Now, who's got a sick sense of humor that would think this is funny? He doesn't mean it to be funny. It isn't a joke. Th then it's got to be someone who's got an you, like E.K. <sighs> yeah, I thought of that. It just doesn't seem like something he'd do. Why not? He, he knows your locky, your schedule. He could have planted the note easily. I, I just don't think so. Look, it adds up. You even said E.K. thought you were leading him on. And he sure has been acting weird lately. Yeah, but he thinks I'm a prude. Why would he bother? Gail, did you tell me everything that happened between you and E.K.? You can't help me. Forget it. Hey, look, Gail, Gail, listen. No, I'm just sorry. Leave Gail, me. no, no, just no. Leave I didn't me mean. Alone. Gail, look, I. Gail, I'm sorry. <coughs> Mom? Hi, honey. Did you have a good day? Uh, yeah, it was okay. Listen, I'm late. <clears throat> I'm not going to be here for dinner, but um, I've got a casserole in the oven. Just put it on whenever you're hungry, about mm, 20 minutes, I'd say, 3.50. Where are you going? Uh, I've got to show a house. It's late? Yeah, you know, I think I've got a buyer for the Brooklyn Street place. Oh, they've seen it once, they want to see it again. I've got to run over and give them the keys. Well, where's Dad? He's at a meeting. But don't wait for him, because he's not sure when he'll get back. Ma Mom, wait. What do you want? I have to talk to you. Yeah, why do you always do this when I'm running out? I can't talk to you now. I just wanted to ask you if we could change the phone number, but never mind. The phone number? Why? Because of the call. What calls? What are you talking about, Gail? Well, what difference does it make? You never know what I'm talking about. You never listen to me. Oh, Gail. I'm always the one that doesn't listen. Well, just maybe you don't listen. Maybe you don't understand me. I have to hold up my end in this family. Now, I know I have not been easy on you. I've been hard on you lately. But listen, there's a reason. I can see myself in you. I felt passionately in love with your father when I was just about your age. We rushed into marriage. You were born. Well, are you sorry you married, Dad? No, I don't regret it at all. I, I wouldn't give either of you up for anything in the world. I just wish that I had taken the time. The time to find out about myself, about the world. There's so much, Gail. There are so many choices to make. I want you to take the time to make them. I want you to have it all. Listen, I've got to go. I'm so late. I'm sorry. We'll talk about it later, OK?
Your father doesn't work here anymore. What? He got laid off about a month ago. A lot of the guys did. We didn't get this big contract we bid on, so there wasn't enough work. And, well, that's what happened. I'm sorry. Are you sure? He never told you? He leaves the house the same time every morning like he's going to work. I guess a lot of the guys do that. They can't get used to breaking the routine. Well, then where does he go? I have to find him. I have to talk to him. Could you at least tell me where to look? Try King's Inn. King's Inn, it's across the street. Your father used to eat lunch there every day. It's a little early for lunch, but, well, it's worth a try. Okay. I'm sorry, but we don't start serving until 11.30. I can't seat you yet. Oh, I, I don't want a table. I'm looking for someone. There's no one here? Well, uh, the bar is open, but... May I just take a look? I'm just trying to find someone. All right. Why didn't you tell me he lost his job? Come on in, sit down. How'd you find out? It doesn't matter, does it? I found out. Does your father know? No. Why didn't anybody tell me? Because we didn't want to worry you. And what could you do about it? You're treating me as if I'm 10 years old. Aren't I a part of this family? Sweetheart, parents want to protect their children. Well, maybe that's wrong. I don't know. We just, we did the best thing that we could do. Well, I think it would be better if we tried talking to each other once in a while. Gail, yeah, you've got to promise me that you're not going to tell your father. That you know he's laid off. You have to promise me. But why? Because it was his decision not to tell you. He doesn't want you to be disappointed in him. He sees himself as an architect. And being a man is all tied up in that job. He's lost now. He's just lost. You can understand that, can't you? I never could stand to say no to you. He wants you to adore himself. Sometimes that's been hard for me to deal with. Now listen, you must be very adult about this, huh? I have to protect him now. He still sees her as a little girl. And he wants you to see him. He wants you to see him as the um, perfect father. Somebody strong. Somebody to fight your battles for. But he can't anymore, can he? No. He can't. Don't be too hard on him for that, huh? Okay, I won't tell. You weren't in school today. I just went to see my father. In San Francisco? Yeah. Did you show him the note? No. I decided not to. You're probably right. It's a stupid joke. It'll stop.
idea what's the matter. Look, I, I don't know what you want. I just wanted you to hold me. Is there anything wrong with that? Gail, you were the one that started it. Okay. I'm confused. Everything is in a mess. I can't right now, okay? I just can't. I didn't expect anything. Well, then why'd you bring me here? To be alone with you? To talk to you? Because it happens to be very pretty out here. Steve, I'm sorry. So am I. Hello. Gail. Hi, it's Steve. <sighs> Hi. How are you doing? The kids asleep? Yeah, yeah, they're fine. I'm fine. Listen, I'm sorry about the other day. It's okay. I just, oh, I don't know, I'm a bit jumpy lately. And I got another note. It's worse than the last. Listen, I'm helping my father with a job tonight, and he said I could have the car afterwards. You want me to come over and keep you company? Oh, yes. <sighs> Thank you, Steve. Okay, one flooding toilet to cure, and I'll be right there. Okay, bye. Hello. Says he was gonna come by. That's strange. He shouldn't be wandering around at night, you know. Oh, uh, can I use your phone? Sure. Thanks. 
Uh, it's off the hook. Hello? Oh, hello, Mrs. Bremer. Yeah, this is Phil. Is Allison there? really had you fooled, didn't I? Oh. Had you real scared. Phil, will you cut it out? Are you in the house so low? Oh. Hey, uh, I, I know all about you. You and Pastorini down at the lake? I know what you like. I've been watching you a long time, Gail. Sending you notes. Calling you, huh? I've been real patient. Yeah, well, I think you need help. What about Allison? Hey, leave Allison out of this, okay? I've waited. Give me any of this lily white virgin stuff either. Because I know you got nothing to lose. Hey, come here! Oh, oh. 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 I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. She... She was just lying there. Gail. Gail. Wake up now, Gail. That's a good girl. Now, can you tell me your name? Gail? Can you tell me your name? Gail. Gail. You're in Oldenfield Hospital. And you're going to be fine. I'm Dr. Carson. I have to ask you a few questions. Do you feel up to it? That's okay. You're doing fine. Do you know why you're here, Gail? He raped me. Who raped you? Do you know him, Gail? She probably won't get pregnant. 
Carson said that she probably won't get pregnant. Who would do this to her? I know it isn't Mash. She's a part of me, and I feel like this happened to me. You know, I, I look at her, and, and I tell myself, it's all over. She's all right. But I can't hang on to that. It just hits me again. Rage hits me again. And I want to kill the animal that did this to her. It was all a blur. I don't remember. Well, what color was his jacket? I, I don't know. Uh, brown, maybe. What color pants? Did he have on a hat? Gloves? No. It isn't any use. I, I just don't remember anything else. I want you to come down to the station and take a look at some mug shots. Maybe you'll recognize them. And if that doesn't work, we have an artist who can put a drawing together. You know, tall with brown hair isn't much of a description. You let a stranger in the door. You struggled. He threw you down, assaulted and raped you. And you can't remember what he looks like? I'll tell you what I think. I've been on these cases before, and they always remember. So if you decide to give me his name, call the station. And if you don't, we don't have a case. And he walks around free, and it's going to happen to somebody else. Philip Lover. Philip Lover raped me. You can't go over this. This is no solution. There is no other solution. The police won't even issue a warrant. Now listen, you're this complicated. You gotta listen, listen. It's not complicated. It's very simple. Philip Lauber raped my daughter, and now you're telling me that even if we do get a warrant, the judge is a good buddy of John Lauber's, and we don't have a chance. That's not what I said. Now, Neil, for God's sake, would you please think? I am thinking. I am thinking about that kid walking around free while I can't even put him behind bars. Why? Because she's not a virgin, that's why. No, that's not why. But this is a difficult case, though, and there's some facts that we have to take into consideration. Their lawyers do have influence. Gail did let Phil in the door. Plus the fact that she's not a virgin. Now, if we have to go to court, the defense attorney is going to make Phil look like a model student and Gail the seductress. She must have done something. What had happened to Gail? I can't believe you said that. And Gail didn't provoke the attack. And it doesn't make any difference what went on between them. Nothing justifies rape. I know that. I didn't mean it. Listen, I'm just as scared and frightened as angry as you are. And now what happens? Philip Lover walks around free and I've got a child upstairs who won't even leave the house. Neil, you know, my world is falling apart. And if we are going to face this, we've got to face it together because I cannot face it alone. I can't. I can't face it alone.
I'd like to kill you for what you did to her. Them, will they? Not yet. Jessica will get them to issue a warrant. But why won't they? It's a small town. The lawyers run the show. And even if they arrest him, he'll get a free, won't he? Maybe. I keep dreaming about it. And then I wake up and try and tell myself it's a bad dream, but it isn't. We moved here because it would be safe. But it isn't. It isn't safe. Do you remember when you were a little girl, you had a favorite bedtime story? Hmm? <laughs> huh? Yes, it was about the princess in the tower. Right. The princess was locked in the tower by the evil knight. And the prince would come and rescue her and take her away to his castle where she'd be safe. Remember? <laughs> Only sometimes I kind of changed the story a little bit, you know. The castle had a moat and some dragons and all sorts of things. But the prince always rescued her. There's always a happy ending. Well, it's not true. There isn't always a happy ending. I should have told you that. I know that, Daddy. I wanted to move here to protect you. And I didn't tell you I lost my job to protect you. And I suppose that's the reason that I never told you that sometimes life is hard. And I can't protect you from that. But I know that. It isn't your fault. Maybe it's everybody's. I'll take out a loan. We'll send her to a private school. What else can we do? I don't know. Maybe we should send her back to Oldenfield. <laughs> With Philip Lauber there? But hasn't he done enough? Does he also get to force her out of Oldenfield High? I'm not going back there. I heard what you said. I've made a decision. I won't go back. Honey, you don't have to decide that yet. Yes, I do. I want to go live with Aunt Meg in Connecticut. That's my decision. Okay, okay. Let us talk about it. No way. Miss Malovich. So you leave. The rumors conflict on that point, so Malievich must see for herself. Um, Mom, Dad, this yes? is Miss Malovich. This is my mother and father. Hello, Miss Malovich. Pleasure. Won't you come in? Please, I must ask you to excuse this intrusion to your home, but you see, the school is like a small village, inside the small village, and rumors abound in such places. What are they saying? Nonsense. They invent dramas. They say you were put upon by a gang of dope fiends and beaten. Machines are said to keep her alive. <laughs> oh, you will have an aura of great mystery when you return to school. I'm not going back. Oh? Can I get you something, Miss Millard? No, no, thank you. Mom, Dad, can I talk to Miss Malovich by myself? Sure. Excuse us. I 
I was raped. Well, there is always that nugget of truth in all talk. Oh, I, oh, I am so sorry. Who did this thing to you? Philip Lover. No. I knew the Lovers long before you were born. They always lived too much like they were the only people on Earth. I am not so astonished that in time they should produce a son who cannot live in this world with others. Nobody will. He probably won't even be punished for this. You look for justice, and you punish yourself. What do you mean? Your friend, your life here, it is of importance to you. Then you must fight for it. Criminals walk the streets and you hide yourself inside. Then you are the prisoner. You must not let this happen. But you already know. You know. You cannot run from this thing. got to do it sometime, might as well be now. I'm proud of you. Alliteration, onomatopoeia. I want you to write these terms down in your notebook class. Study them very carefully. In all likelihood, they will be used in your final examination. Now, if you have paid attention during class, you should have no trouble at all. But if you have not, I would be very willing to stay after school and help. But you must study these words. They are very important. Okay, the amount you have to increase your exposure when you have a filter over a lens is generally referred to as a filter factor. Now study these photos you've got. You should be able to tell who's done it right. And who hasn't. Some of them look just horribly grotesque. The rest of them do. And when it's done right, it's a definite addition. Now, read this article. You can go to sleep if you want to, but this, the filter factor is simply the number of times the exposure must be increased to reproduce a gray object properly when using the given filter. A filter factor of two means the exposure must be doubled. A factor of four means the exposure must be increased four times. Allison, are you planning on just never speaking to me again? Don't be silly. I'm not. It's not your fault. I guess you just couldn't help it. What is it my fault? Never mind. Let's just forget about it. No! Forget what? What did he tell you? Let's just forget about it, okay? No, not okay. I was home a whole week. Why didn't you call me? Steve said you didn't want to talk on the phone. Well, that's a lame excuse. You never even tried. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. You just want to pretend that the whole thing never even happened. Phil sent me those notes, and Phil raped me, and you know it. Phil was right. You're out of your mind. He's got tramps and angels. You're the angel, and everybody else is a tramp. Phil said you threw yourself at him. Well, now I know it's true. Philip Lover raped me. Allison, why would I make something like that up? Because you're crazy. You're jealous, and you're crazy. Phil told me. You just want Phil, don't you? You're jealous of us, that's what it is! And you won't give up your wedding cake, man, is the 
will you? <laughs> Allison would believe you, did you? I don't know. She's my best friend. He's sick. It's all wrong. Don't think about it. I have to. The preliminary hearing's next week. The judge could throw it out of court, or Phil could even get off by plea bargaining. It's hopeless. There just isn't enough evidence. Gail, uh, if you really feel that way, maybe you shouldn't go to court. Maybe you should just give yourself some time to get over it. No, I have to go. It's the only way I can get over it. I just don't know. I can't let it happen again. I've got to find a way to prove it was Phil. How? How much longer? I'm just about finished. What do you call it? Photography. You see, the shutter will click every couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. And that way... If Philip Lover tries to put another note in Sonia's locker, I'll get it on film. afraid of me. No. Remember what you said about just getting over it? Mm -hmm. Just giving myself time. Okay? at you. That's what you told me. But that just doesn't make sense.
me something. Please, just tell me what happened. I don't have to account to you for anything I do. I don't have to account to anyone for anything I do. did get to court. Philip Lover pleaded guilty to assault. So they threw out the rape charge, but even though I lost, it was worth it to get it all out in the open. Phil left school after Thanksgiving. Someone said he went crazy and they put him away. But Steve and I don't think that's what happened. Somebody else said his folks sent him to a boarding school in New Hampshire. That's probably where he is. After it was all over, I asked Jessica, how come the law protects the rapist and not the victim? And she said, because the system is wrong. A couple were expecting to adopt a young boy, but receive a girl from the orphanage instead. After a bit of umming and ah.